right there. I'm sorry, buddy. All right, one more time, guys. This is Giovanni here at Flow Factory, having a great time talking to a lot of our artists. I have next to me 5 a.m. There he is. He's got a lot of energy. Come over here a little bit. All right, my friend. First of all, I know we had a little conversation earlier, so I'm going to get some uh, hopefully good questions with you and some good answers. So what brings you here tonight? Well, my boy Max, I've been making some absolute fucking fire with this man. You're going to hear one of them tonight, Dream in the Forest. But, uh, yeah, he said, yo, bro, this shit's too fire. You got to perform. I said, fuck yeah, that's pretty much what's going down. And that, you know, I was telling one of the other guys, it's he obviously believes in you. And they, like when you and I were talking out in the parking lot, when somebody believes in you, you know, that's a, such a great motivating factor. And then, of course, you got to believe in yourself. Of course. Like, all I can say to believe in myself is, ah, we the fuck yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, uh, and it's really great to have boys like Max, like, supporting me and helping me continue to believe in myself and shit like that. 100%. Yeah, you know, I know you're a young guy getting relatively, I mean, you, you were telling me you got hundreds of songs. 50 fucking demos. I'd say 60 of them ready to go. This is my year. 2023, money at 5 a.m. 2 plus 3 equals 5. Now, come on now. <laughs> I like that. All right, so we're doing a little math. Here we are. But, um, yeah, absolutely. So, obviously, how long did it take you to write those 250 songs? I've been making shit since, like, 2015. Like, I'd say shit got real, like, 2019, 2020. Like, and everything that I've been, like, super proud of, like, that I would really be releasing was the last three years. So, like, I'm 23 now, like, age, like, 20 slash 21 to 23 is, like, my shit that, my prime real estate. <laughs> you know, it's, as a musician myself, you know, it's nice to get in that flow yeah. where you can write constantly, never get out of the groove. So, during that three-year period, and you're writing all this music, what was your main motivation and what really kept you, what was that driving force that kept you going forward? I, music's been the only constant in my life. It's been the only choice that I've gotten to make for myself, like, of who I want to be and what I want to do. And it actually has brought my siblings and I, like, very close together as well. My younger sister, Zozo, uh, and my bro brother, Henry Frazier, they're both uh, artists as well. I'm the oldest sibling. But so, I'd say family... Like, getting me through life, like, no matter what I'm going through, I always have a way to express myself and make all the shitty and the good stuff worth experiencing. Absolutely. You know, that's the, the one thing about music is one of the greatest ways of expression. And, it, you know, you can really tell your story through your music, you know, and everybody comes with a different story. That's the best part. And, you know, depending on the artist and whether they're writing direct songs, you know, that you know exactly what they're saying or kind of being esoteric and, you know, having the listener kind of interpret themselves. So when you're writing, are you really more of a direct stylistic guy or do you want kind of people to interpret the songs their own way? Every single time it's different. Like, I'd say I go through phases for sure. I, for the past, like, six months, I've really been in my, like, punch freestyling phase. So the lyrics aren't as important the first time around. I'll just get my vibe out, get my feeling out, and then if I'm not feeling the lyrics later, you can always change it. Like, uh, but I'll definitely, I'll also have times where I'll just write lyrics before I even have a beat. But most of the time, everything's centered around the beat for me. I, I like, usually I'm either feeling it and freestyling or just listening to the beat over and over again while I'm writing it. Well, that's very interesting because, again, I love talking to other musicians to see how their process is. You know, like... I've been playing music for 30 odd years and only once in my whole life have I written a song before I wrote the music. So it's interesting to hear how you do it. It's much more rare for me to like write it before I hear it. It's always, like I said, based around the music most of the time. And you were saying that you actually change the lyrics of your own music. Yeah, that as well. Every once in a while. like It's not like as often, but usually like if I haven't finished the full song, then... Um, like, if I'm feeling something, it's not that I'll usually have a full-length song, and then I'll be like, oh, I hate that line, I'm going to switch that line. Because usually, I, if I have the whole song, I was feeling it. But uh, usually, if I'll have, like, just a chorus and a verse, and then I'm, I start the second verse, I'm fucking with that, I'm fucking with the chorus, I'm like, oh, part of the first verse, I'm not really feeling that one little part. So, like, usually that's the case. But most of the time, like, I feel like a song is capturing a moment, capturing that memory. So I usually don't like switch the lyrics but every once in a while I'll do I can dig it I've had songs from 30 years ago that I tell myself oh, I need to change them I'm a different person now but I, I, I don't only because 
you know, I don't know, it takes away from me personally just the integrity of that song from that part of my life. Yeah, it's just capturing a moment. It's like a little bubble. <laughs> so, as a musician, what really, what was your true driving factor that said, you know what, I know you said you've had music your whole life, but there had to have been that kind of click moment that you said, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. What was that, or do you even remember that? I would say that there was no one specific moment. Like, the, the moment that turned, turned me from, I knew I wanted to be in music for a long time. The moment that shifted me into being an artist, uh, my freshman year of college, I requested that my roommate was a producer, and he got, I got a producer. And so then I was like, all right, I'll just hop on the mic all the time. So that started making that shift. But I'd say the strongest thing that's pushed me through, like, making sure I'm doing this is I've had depression and anxiety since I was, like, 12 years old. And uh, then I got diagnosed bipolar in 2021. And so I've reset in a lot of ways. And it's, like, music has helped me through this entire journey and also, like, been a way to, like, express it and, like, be interesting and unique. Like, I feel, like, very weird being bipolar, like, but at the same time, like, I'm different. I'm tight different. Like, I'm going to show the world. Like... Well, let me ask you, having saying like we were talking about music being a therapy, do you feel that it's therapeutic in these diagnoses that and the only reason I'm asking is sometimes, you know, I've talked to other music therapists and to try to get people off medications or to, you know, kind of really channel that energy. Do you feel that music has made that difference in those diagnoses for you? Absolutely. I mean, I think that music can't be the answer to everything. Like it will get you through really hard times and like give you an explanation for things, but you have to, everything's about balance in life. So it, it's more than just music. Like, and if you're not using the music in a constructive way and the lifestyle of the music industry, it can be really detrimental and like harming and isolating. Like there's a lot of real, like artists are, have like terrible mental health a lot of the time. Like, and it's like, uh, it really, really depends on how you can adapt and roll with the punches and like be observant of what's going on with yourself. Like, now you have a really good outlook on it. Again, you, you know, all you young guys today have a really uh, great attitude towards it because you're right. It's a really weird thing, especially in music, that seems to really take people into dark places and so often they don't know how to get out of them. Yeah. It's really, really hard. Like you got to try everything a little bit of everything like uh, I always am one to recommend therapy like but like you got to find the right person for you like you were saying music your own therapy it's definitely like one therapist like it's okay to have multiple therapists multiple people to talk to in your life and like uh, I'm sorry can you repeat the question one more time I forgot that one kind of I was just saying that how so many musicians especially certain genres of music rock punk you know, they, they get these really downward spirals, which is funny because so often hip-hop and rap gets a worse reputation, but it seems, in, the, in terms of the attitude, m most rappers I've worked with and hip-hop artists, they seem to have such a great attitude. Yeah. I mean, I think, like, it's, like, hard to know. Like, a, lo a lot of times, like, I feel like people want to, like, push off positivity, like, they don't want to like show any like in the music obviously you express yourself but like in the way you give yourself off when you're representing yourself to others on an individual level or on social media or whatever you like all want to be about positivity no bad vibes no whatever like and then you kind of like let it out in the music and sometimes it can feel like inorganic sometimes because like you're you're giving out one thing in one direction and giving out something in another direction and you're like what am i even about sometimes like and so i think like uh I don't know what I'm saying, but no, you've actually. Well, you're on a. You're kind of on a. Here, come a little closer so you get in frame. I know everybody keeps doing that. I must smell really bad, but you know you had a great train of thought. No, it was a great, good, good answer. It's uh, it's funny because you should say that. I was talking to somebody the other day about music, especially like in rock when they have all these love ballads, right? But at the end of the day, they're just sleeping with every right. So it's such a strange dichotomy. Yeah, dude. Like, uh, I don't know, like, whether it's just my experience of bi being bipolar, but, like, when I'm manic especially, like, it feels like you're living different lives sometimes. And then, like, other times, and uh, sometimes that's really good because, like, that's what you need in this industry. And other times, like, you're like, can I just be myself? Like, and, like, I don't feel like I'm acting most of the time. Like, I feel like I'm just being myself. But, like, it it's really, like, confusing, like, because nobody's... Like, even your music 
it represents different sides of yourself. And so it's like, I might have a single about this, a single about that, a single about a whole other thing. And it's like, which side is the most marketable versus which side is what feels like the best version of me? Which side am I the most proud of? Like, and it, it's like a lot of moving factors that it's, it's hard to like, people don't want like you to say, look, I'm everything all at once. Like, they want to understand your lane. They want to understand your tone, your voice. Like, no, when I hear 5 a.m., this is 5 a.m. When I hear Young Thug, this is Young Thug. When I hear Chance, this is Chance. Like, so it's like, it's definitely difficult. Like, uh, you're torn in every which way. Like, but like I think like as long as you're having a fun time and like trying to like keep your head on your shoulders like that's all you can do like well knowing all those things then how do you keep yourself really grounded knowing that at some point especially if you get you know more into the game that you can be pulled in multiple directions what do you do personally for yourself that keeps you grounded what I've been trying to work on and failing miserably all the time is uh, building a routine like uh, because when you can keep certain constants in your life, it makes all the extraneous shit a little bit more manageable. Like, and so I've just been trying to be at, like, I'm. I have so many fucking demos. Like at this point, like if I didn't make another song for three years, I could still keep releasing songs continuously. And it's like, so it's like there's all this other sh like now I have to deal with everything that's not the music. Like, and the music's the only thing that I'm like fuck yeah. Like come on now. Like, and so I think. The thing that I'm like trying to do is be consistent. Like the thing that's easy to, to be consistent with is your passion. It's easy for me to lock myself in a room and just make music every single day. Like because it's my favorite thing to do. Like, but it's like you have to train yourself. Or, or if you care about something and you want an outcome, like you have to like know you're gonna be shit at something and just continue to do it every day for like at least an hour. Like, and so that's why I want to build a routine. So instead of just doing one thing like recording or one specific thing I want to focus on at that time, like I have like five or six things that I'm like slowly building those skills in and that I can be confident in myself knowing my ability. Like, so I think that's one end. And then the other end I would say is like, Keeping your good friends close, but like knowing who to trust, like especially out here in LA, there's a lot of fuckers. <laughs> it's sad but true. Again, you got you know the habits, consistency with those habits, you know, and not allowing. You know, one thing that I found with those, so many people who want to be an artist, it's the lack of belief in themselves. And then the second one is even if they have belief, they're afraid no one else is going to believe in them. Now, do you struggle with that a lot, or do you believe in yourself, and you know other people are gonna believe in you? I don't believe that any person doesn't like have doubt. Like, uh, I think like the only people who possibly could would be someone like Michael Jackson, whose father from the beginning. Like, you're all superstars, like, and like, literally like beating them into believing that. Like, I, like I think like you can convince yourself of anything. Like, you convince yourself to like. And like I'd say when I was like the most manic and I felt the craziest, like is when I was the most confident. Like, like I was forcing myself to believe you're gonna make it. Like, believing I was ordained for this shit. Like, and it's like different times you like feel like is that crazy? Like, is that like the mindset you need? And it's like I think it's very normal. Is all I'm saying. Like, and it's like uh, I lost my train of thought again. But no, you, again, you've had some good trains of thought. Well, look, man, you've had you got a good head on your shoulders, my friend. So, um, how can everybody out there find you? 5 a.m. living. I'm 5 a.m. The platform's 5 a.m. living. 5 a.m. L I I V I N. Come on now. So, I'm doing Twitch. If you want to see me stream some games, I got some silly YouTube shit. I got one single out right now. And then this year, 2 plus 3 equals 5. Like I said, I'm about to drop single, single, two more singles, probably EP before the end of 2023. Come on now. All right. Spotify. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, this is 5 a.m. I can't wait to hear him again tonight. I heard him at Soundcheck. Hope you guys get a chance to check him out. Great attitude. Great young man. And one more time, we're at Flow Factory. We'll see you guys on the other side. Ow! Great interview, my friend. Thank you, guys. Sir. No, you